It feels like it has been an eternity that we've had nothing to do but stare at this engineering sample of an Xbox Series X APU. Of course, now that has changed that we have the full specs, and I'll go over them quickly. We have a full 8-core Zen 2 CPU going up to 3.8 gigahertz, but that's only with SMT turned off, and 12 teraflops over 52 compute units, 1.8 gigahertz. This console is clocked just as fast as desktop chips, and it includes desktop class storage, although not blazing fast, but still way above average. However, here's the thing. I don't want to dwell on these specs. You can Google around if you want the details. This video is really about giving extra perspectives on things I think others may have overlooked. That was really the reason I made Moore's Law is Dead, so let's get into it. First, a bit of the smaller stuff. The no SMT mode was interesting, but it's common sense when you consider backwards compatibility, in my opinion. If all you want to do is straight backwards compatibility, you don't really have to worry about much with an 8-core Zen 2 CPU versus the Jaguar Plus and the Xbox One X. And that's because the Jaguar Plus APU in the Xbox One X only clocked to like 2.3 gigahertz. So you're going to run those games. But what Xbox is showing off right now is something I hope Sony takes note of. I don't just want to play my older games, although I guess maybe I'd consider selling for that. No, ideally, I want to play my older games at max settings for what my new console is capable of. So if you turn off SMT, the old console at 8 cores, this one doesn't need 16 threads, it just needs, you know, 8 and if you get it to as high of a clock speed as possible, this makes it as easy at a hardware level as conceivable to just simply go from 30 frames to 60. Most last-gen games were still, unfortunately, 30 frames per second, even though 60 FPS was way more prevalent in the PS360 generation. And taking these games and just running them at 4K60 instead of what is, well, on the Xbox One X, usually more close to 1440p30... That's a major killer feature, and this was touched on by a few other people, but I want to be clear that I think that really is why they have an SMT off mode, and no one should be surprised that there aren't boost clocks. These are consoles. They run at constant clock speeds, but I guess I will accept Xbox's additional argument that the SMT off mode is also for some launch games, although again... I don't know. If the game runs on Xbox One X, you don't need more than 3.6 gigahertz to get it to run on the new console. But I digress. I now want to talk about the equivalent PC CPU performance. PCMR fanboys have long mocked me for saying the next-gen consoles will target 2080 Ti and 9900K performance. Obviously, they're already crazy fucking wrong when it comes to the 2080 Ti. It's abundantly obvious this will at least perform that well. But they continue to deny that it will have around 9900K performance. And here's what I think a lot of people aren't comprehending. Yes, if you throw unoptimized code at a 9900K and let's say a Renoir 8 core, the 9900K will outperform it if you close all background tasks. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a console where the developers specifically optimize for this CPU architecture and have other secondary chips and enhancements to the design, the interconnectivity, to make it so it's more efficient at sharing data and processing the things it needs to in its games, right? Microsoft goes out of their way, I flash it on screen, to say this is the equivalent of 13 Zen 2 cores when it comes to I.O. rate, and they will program to the metal. You want at least a 9900K to keep up with next-gen consoles. And by the way, one reason they are working so hard at making sure the I.O. connectivity works so well is because, well, here's an example. When I play The Division 2, that game's pretty modern, and it uses my Gen 4 SSD to load faster. Not to its fullest capabilities, not even half of its fullest capabilities, but it uses it. And it needs a lot of threads at once to load it. I see my 3950X actually use all cores at once to load quickly and they want to make sure if they're going to use a fast ssd they maximize its capabilities so they're kind of saying if you wanted to load an nvme drive as fast as the xbox series x you'll need 13 cores speaking of loading let's talk about that expandable storage Right now, I'm seeing a lot of people laud Xbox for offering expandable storage in addition to the one terabyte of SSD that comes in the console, but 
I want you to know what that looks like to me. That looks like a proprietary storage upgrade. So this is one of those uh, potholes I could see Xbox hit this console generation. Anyone remember how bad the uh, needlessly proprietary storage was for the PlayStation Vita? That's what that's honestly reminding me of. It's 2.4 gigabytes per second, guys. This doesn't even need Gen 4 SSD. This could use the majority of NVMe drives on PC right now, but I guess I won't dwell on that. We don't know how much they're going to charge, and we don't know if there is maybe some extra reason they're making it proprietary for I would argue no reason, but I will just highlight that because, you know, I have a PS4 Pro um, and I put a one terabyte SSD in there and I could buy that one terabyte SSD a year ago for like 80 bucks. And if that's an option in a next gen console, that's really nice. But who knows? Maybe they won't price gouge too much. That's just something to watch. However, the two biggest things to watch are really the RT performance and what it means for RDNA 2.0, and of course, the expected price. And I'll get to that in just a second, but I do have a sponsored ad I'm going to run here. It's 30 seconds if you want to skip it, but I put effort into making it funny, so bear with me. Uh, uh, I don't want just OLED or portable monitor or a cheap laptop. I want it all. I need cash back. Don't freak out your dog. Don't have a bad hair day. Just go to LettyShops.com. LettyShops.com supports thousands of stores with cash back given to you after you make purchases. And they have a Chrome extension and apps on the iOS and Google Play Store. Register now and get premium cash back increased by 30%. Links in the description. Now. I don't hide it. I like gaming on console almost as much as I game on PC. But if you're hell-bent on staying on PC, the biggest question you have probably looking at these consoles, besides the price, is what does this ray tracing performance mean for RDNA 2.0? Will AMD usurp NVIDIA? And to be honest, we can't say for sure yet, but there are a couple of hints dropped that I think give us an idea of what to expect. Well, this isn't directly comparable to the numbers NVIDIA tends to highlight. We do have a number. It is said that the RT performance, separate of the rasterization performance, as a result of the RDNA 2.0 ray tracing customizations, is able to do the equivalent of 25 teraflops of ray tracing. Now, at first, I was doing this elaborate, rough guesstimation math comparing 1080 Ti to Titan V to 2080 Ti performance to say, okay, can we somehow convert the giga rays and RTX ops NVIDIA uses with 2080 Ti to what just raw brute force teraflops is capable of in ray tracing? And the number I came to was something between, uh, I don't know, the... Xbox Series X based on 25 teraflops of ray tracing performance being somewhere around 20% to 30% better than a 2080 Ti, but that's such rough math and such a bizarre way to do it that I sat there and thought for a while and then I realized, duh. What about the Crytek Neon Noir demo? This lets you directly compare NVIDIA and AMD hardware with a common baseline, and it finds that the 5700 XT is about an RTX 2060. However, the Xbox Series X is not just like 9.7 teraflops. It has 25 teraflops just for ray tracing. And so with that in mind, if we use this, and I say, again, very rough and half bullshit method of calculating it, I think you get to the Xbox Series X being capable of about 33% better ray tracing than the 2080 Ti. And if that's true, I mean, based on a link in the description, you can run Battlefield 5 right now at about 40 FPS ultra ray traced in 4K, 33% more. With optimizations from developers, I think that's just about perfect to get to 4K 60 ultra ray tracing. And I do think developers will make much better use of ray tracing effects when it's standard in a console. So that, to me, is very exciting, especially when you consider with 52 compute units, Big Navi is probably going to have, what, like 40% more compute units, a little less than 40% more compute units, and clocked a bit faster. Yeah, I think 
I think 4K60 ray tracing on PC with the top RDNA 2 card is, at this point, expected. As expected, RTX games being advertised as NVIDIA only are about to work on AMD and even Intel graphics cards. Microsoft showed off Minecraft on AMD hardware, and anyone who told you to buy NVIDIA cards for future-proofing yourself or ray tracing had ulterior motives. I won't name names, but I will name other ulterior motives. I find it very interesting that the Xbox Series X SoC was shown running for Xbox One instances for streaming, thus showing the modularity in Microsoft's approach. These APUs will be used for more than just a console, and it reminds me of that Saison leak I got where it seemed like Microsoft was considering using a weaker APU both for an Xbox stream and for a Surface laptop. Although I gotta say, I don't really think there's a weaker Xbox anymore, and that brings us to the pricing discussion. Launching a weaker Xbox stream at launch really only makes sense from the point of view of making sure you don't alienate your entire fan base with an overly expensive console. And I know from talking to a source at Sony that they were at least under the impression Microsoft was going to launch their console for $600 for a while. However, when I look at the bill of materials, I don't really see that. I don't know what to tell you guys. Consoles are usually sold at a loss, and I can't hammer this point enough. Our components and our desktops are not as expensive to make as most people seem to think. I really think the Xbox Series X, it made enough sacrifices, right? It's only 16 gigabytes of RAM total. I was kind of hoping for more, and it has a terabyte of storage. I was wondering if they'd go to like 1.5 terabytes. They didn't. This could be sold for, I believe, at cost at $500. In fact, if Microsoft were to get as aggressive as they did in the PS360 era, which was a horrific war of attrition that almost put Sony out of business, was a waste of their time, Microsoft lost billions, it was so dumb, they could sell for $400. But I don't think they're going to sell this thing for like 20%, 30% below cost. I think they're going to go at most 10% below cost. And if they do, it should easily be doable for $499. That's how much this console is going to cost. I'm pretty confident. I'm mean, in fact, you know, if it's going to be $499, do you really want to launch a weaker console, even if you get it down to, let's say, $349, right? Where Sony can go, well, I don't know, is our competition 12 teraflops? They've got a 6 teraflop option. They're a lot weaker than we are. Do you really want to give Sony that opening? I don't think you do. And I don't think Sony wants to give Microsoft that opening either. So I think it's going to be $499, and I think the I think the PlayStation is too. I think they're both going to be $499, which I guess we're talking about it now. Let's talk about the PS5. It seems Phil Spencer's prodding has finally got to Sony. Out of nowhere, they are going to do an overview of the PlayStation 5 tomorrow, where console genius engineer and reanimated haunted doll Mark Cerny will take to the stage and go over just what, at the very least, the PS5 strategy is. I find this really interesting that Sony's going to do a console overview one day after Microsoft basically finished revealing all of their cards. Now, I know people will say we don't know everything, and we don't know little details like exactly how the ray tracing works, but we know enough. We know more than enough that the people actually at Sony know everything, including the price, probably $500, and they know the overall performance and everything this console is capable of. I saw one article that was like... Uh, Sony is making a massive mistake by letting Microsoft steal all the mindshare early. And I thought, I don't know, the consoles don't come out until the end of this year. And due to the pandemic, it might not be till the very end of this year. We got a long ways to go until these consoles come out. And so there's a decent chance that Sony might be just planning to do a full blowout once Microsoft has shot their entire load. And they just did. This might be when Sony comes out and says, now we steal the momentum. That's possibly what's going on. Or Sony's just scrambling and says they can't be quiet anymore. To be honest, it's probably a bit of both. But what's my opinion on what Sony's going to talk about? I've long said what developers have said and told me. These consoles are very similar performance. Do not expect the PlayStation to come out with 20 teraflops, and don't expect it to come out with 8 teraflops. 
whatever it is, they're going to be pretty close. Although we do know that Sony was targeting instant load times from the beginning, so I expect its storage to be possibly over twice as fast. And again, that will be utilized. Outside of that, I really want to emphasize these things. Do not just focus on one spec for either console. If the PlayStation is 13 teraflops or 11 teraflops, that doesn't necessarily mean it's stronger or weaker. There are other things to look for, like total amount of RAM. Is there a backup CPU with its own dedicated RAM? What's the bandwidth? Is it less bandwidth? Is it more bandwidth? That factors into this. Is there a secret ray tracing chip? I've long held the opinion that Adsure could be a partner with Sony on the PS5 for custom ray tracing features. I don't know. I guess the only other thing I'll say about the PlayStation is I don't expect a complete di dive on everything on the console now. And long term, wireless VR gaming is something Sony is going to target. And this is something Microsoft is seeming to neglect this generation. Although that's a video for tomorrow about the PlayStation. What I do know is these consoles will be similar performance. And the bar, the minimum for recommended gaming is about to get a gigantic boost. 2080 Ti rasterization performance, 9900K CPU performance, blazing fast storage and enhanced capabilities in ray tracing and surround sound audio and much more. That is the new standard. Don't worry, I will have much more to say analyzing the PlayStation and comparing and contrasting both of these consoles with each other and with what's coming out on PC, including 8 nanometer Ampere. Subscribe to my channel, ring the bell button so you don't miss it, and if you like this video, please like it, tell me what you think, share your thoughts, and consider supporting me on Patreon, and you know, listen to the broken silicon that came out today. All right, guys, thank you. No, no, up here, up here, up, 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 sit, good dog, stay.